If you were going to have some solar panels installed on your rooftop or as a pole mount someplace on the property, without a doubt one of the most important things about the actual solar array is making sure that the solar panels themselves are oriented in the right direction. And that solar panel orientation is to be based solely on the fact that you want to make sure you understand the sun's path and how they change throughout the course of the year. So that's what this little lecture is going to be about. It's about determining how you can make sure that you use the sun's paths correctly to make sure the solar panels are oriented in the right direction and they have as best you can possibly get the tilt angle that would maximize the amount of energy that you'd get from the solar panels. So this little diagram here just shows you some indication as to how the sun's paths change throughout the course of the year. I'm hoping that you've been around long enough that you kind of watch the seasons and see that the sun will not rise and set in the same direction every single day of the year for that matter, get to the same altitude or height in the sky over the course of the year. So this diagram shows an observer here standing in the middle of this dome. This here represents essentially the sky dome above your head. Um, similar to like if you were sitting in a planetarium where they try to mimic that sky dome as you're sitting inside a planetarium. Uh, this observer here is actually getting the opportunity to see something that's not possible, and that is the three possible paths of the sun as it goes across the sky for the different seasons of the year. So this lowest path that's out here would be the winter solstice path when the sun's got its shortest path of the year and the lowest altitude. This middle path here would be the spring and fall seasons where it's somewhere higher than that winter solstice. Those are the equinoxes. And then the greatest and longest path with the greatest altitude is this path here which is the summer solstice. Now, I just want to make sure you understand, too, that the amount of angular difference between each of these solstices and equinoxes is always going to be 23 and a half degrees change in altitude from any solstice to an equinox, or for that matter, from the equinox to another solstice. It's always going to be 23 and a half degrees is the difference in the sun's altitude. And that is due to the fact that the Earth's spinning rotational axis is angled at 23 and a half degrees as it makes its revolution around the sun. So this is what we're looking at, is that sun's path changes throughout the course of the year. And because of that, you'd like to make sure that your solar panels are orient oriented in a way that's going to maximize that sun exposure to maximize the amount of electricity. So let's go through how you can go ahead and determine these sun's paths. Anytime you're going to describe the sun's path, there's really going to be two things you'll need to know. One is the azimuth, which is just a fancy name for compass direction. And the other one is altitude, which is the angle above the horizon. So compass direction, and this is just a picture of the phone app, the compass phone app. Um, that compass direction has a range of values from zero going all the way around in a circle back to 360, where zero degrees is going to represent north, 90 degrees is east, 180 is south, and 270 degrees is west. So that's the compass direction. It's measured in the plane of the Earth's surface. Okay. Um, altitude is how high the sun gets above the horizon measured in degrees as an angle. It can go from a range of zero degrees, where it's right on the horizon, to 90 degrees, which is directly above your head. Now, anyone in the United States would never actually see an altitude that gets to 90 degrees. There's no place in our country that has the sun ever directly overhead. Okay, so if we know these two things here, we can go ahead and describe the position of the sun at any spot in the sky. So now let's take a look at what we want to describe. Um, this is a picture of the azimuth that's actually measured in the plane of the Earth's surface. It's measured from north in the clockwise direction and goes all the way back around to 360 degrees. And then here is the altitude angle in terms of the angle above the horizon. So this represents an observer standing here. There's the sun's position. This would be the azimuth. You'd have to turn in this direction and then move your head up in this altitude to find the sun in that particular point. Now, we don't need to measure the sun's path for every single day of the year. All we need to do is actually look at four important dates, and that would be the four dates that represent the beginning of our four seasons. They fall pretty much always on these days, but it might be off by one day, depending on whether it's a leap year or what's happening in terms of our calendars. So you have the March 20th vernal equinox. It's our spring equinox. That essentially represents the first day of spring. 
June 21st, the summer solstice. September 23rd, the autumnal equinox, the first day of fall. December 21st, the winter solstice, the first day of winter. Equinox is Latin. Equa is equal. Nox is night. Represents the two days of the year where you have equal night and day. 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness. Solstice, sol, is Latin for sun. Stis is Latin for end point. So this is the point in which the sun has reached its highest point in the sky, the solstice for summer solstice. In the winter solstice, the sun has reached its lowest point in the sky. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at these four dates for um, each of the locations that we're interested in for determining sun's paths. A few days ago, I had you guys use the sun's path calculator to determine and look up the sun's path data for our area. And they have Albany, New York in that sun's path calculator. The latitude of Albany, New York is 43 degrees north. In this data table, I've got the equinoxes. Here's the March 20th equinox. There's the September 23rd autumnal equinox and the two solstices. There's the summer solstice and the winter solstice. Looking at these numbers on this data table, it might appear that there's just some random assortment of a bunch of numbers. There's nothing to it, just kind of, they're just gobbledygook. But there actually are some very nice patterns in there. And once you know the patterns, you can actually start using those patterns to figure out what the sun's paths are for different areas. And so that's what I want to go through is the different patterns so you recognize what they are. Because you might not live in this area forever. So let's take a look at each of the patterns. The first one is the 90 and 270 for the sunrise and sunset azimuth. What we're talking about here is where would you look to see the sun rising or setting on the horizon? So the first pattern you'll notice is that it's always going to be 90 and 270. So there's two days of the year in which the sun is going to rise due east, 90 degrees, and set due west, 270, and those are the equinoxes. It doesn't matter where you live, okay? It'll always be like that, okay? Whether it be in the United States or if in Europe, it doesn't matter. It's always going to be rising due east and due west, okay, on those two days. The next part of this pattern is the other days of the year in terms of what is the sunrise azimuth and altitude, or excuse me, sunrise and sunset azimuths for other days of the year. These two numbers will always sum to 360, always going to add up to 360. So in this case, Albany, New York has a sunrise azimuth of 56. If you want to know the sunset azimuth, you take 360, subtract the 56, and you get 304. Going over here to the December 21st winter solstice, it has an azimuth of 122. That's somewhere in about the south, uh, southeast, okay? Um, it's going to have 122 for the azimuth. You take 360, subtract 122 from it, and you get 238. So there's our first set of patterns. Okay? These two numbers will always sum to 360. 90 and 270 always going to have those azimuths on those two equinoxes. Next set of data is looking at the solar noon altitude. Okay? So the solar noon altitude, there's actually a little extra part to this, and that is once you know the latitude of your location, the complementary angle to that, meaning the other part of the angle that adds up to 90, will be the vernal equinox and the autumnal equinox um, altitudes. But more importantly, the um, change in the sun's altitude at solar noon from any equinox to any solstice is going to be 23.5 degrees. 23.5 degrees. So if you have 47 on the vernal equinox, the sun will get higher from spring to summer. I mean, this should make sense to you. It's going to get higher in the sky. It's going to be more intense rays. It's going to get higher by 23 and a half degrees. So that 47 that we have here, if you take 23 and a half and add it to 47, it gives you 70.5. From the summer solstice to the fall equinox, it's going to get lower again by 23 and a half degrees. So it falls back down to 47. From the autumnal equinox to the winter solstice, it's going to fall. It's going to get lower in the sky by that 23 and a half degrees. And so it's going to go from 47 minus 23 and a half, get you actually to 23 and a half degrees. Okay? So any change in altitude between any equinox and any solstice will always be by 23 and a half degrees. Always. Doesn't matter where you are. Next pattern is the solar noon azimuth, meaning what direction would you need to look to actually see the sun in the sky? Okay. It's always going to be 180. You can see all of these particular equinoxes and solstices, sunrise, or excuse me, solar noon azimuth is always going to be 180. It will not change. 
And for that matter, every single day it's like that, okay? Every single day. It doesn't matter if it's your birthday, if it's on a July 4th, or whatever it might be, um, it's always going to be 180. So that's an easy one, okay? Always 180. And that's true anytime you live north of the Tropic of Cancer. All of the places here in the United States are north of the Tropic of Cancer, so that's a done deal for us. Last piece of data in terms of looking for patterns, and that's the number of daylight hours. So the first thing is these are called equinoxes, the March 20th vernal equinox and the September 23rd autumn equinox. Those are called equinoxes. So we'll have 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of daylight, 12 hours of darkness, equal day, equal night. Now to determine the amount of daylight for June and December, if you know one, you can figure out the other. And that is that the number of hours that you gain in the summer is equivalent to the number of hours you lose in the winter. So if you gain three hours from the equinox to the summer solstice, to make it 15 hours, to go from the autumnal equinox to winter, you will lose three hours. Okay? So there's all the patterns. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at um, an example. So this is Houston, Texas, uh, a place I used to live in um, when I was working for BP. It has a latitude of 30 degrees north. It's much further south than Albany, New York, which was 43 degrees north. And I just put some random data sitting here into this data table. And with this little bit, just these six pieces of data, matter of fact, we could have done with just five of them, we can go ahead and figure out the rest of this data table. And that's going to be part of your assignment for today. So I want to start here, okay? So the first thing we'll do is the vertical equinox as a 90 degrees sunrise azimuth is going to be due east. So the sunset azimuth is going to be due west. Okay, It always rises due east, due west. And you take a look at these two numbers, they do sum to 360. Once you've got these two, the equinox on the other side for fall is exactly the same. So we're going to fill those guys in. Boom, exactly the same. These, this whole column here will eventually be the same as that column there. They are the same path. The next step, let's get the... Um, sunset azimuth for the June and December solstices, the summer and winter solstices. These two numbers should sum to 360. So if I take 360 and subtract um, 62 from it, I'll get 298. And if I take the 117 and subtract it from 360, I'll get 243. So if you take a calculator and check those numbers, these two numbers sum to 360. Those two numbers sum to 360s, as likewise, so do the equinoxes. So we're done now with the sunset and sunrise azimuths for this location of Houston, Texas. Next is the solar noon altitude. So I know that the sun is about 60 degrees above the horizon on the vernal equinox. Well, as soon as I know the vernal equinox, I immediately know what the autumnal equinox is, so I can fill that guy in. They're exactly the same. Now, the difference, the change from an equinox to the summer solstice, it must get higher. It gets higher by 23 and a half degrees, so I take the 60, add 23 and a half, and I'll get 83.5 degrees, much higher in the sky than it is for us. Okay, getting close to being directly over your head. In terms of the winter solstice altitude, I take that 60 degrees, it's gonna get lower by 23 and a half. So I take 60 minus 23 and a half, it gives me 36.5 degrees. Okay, so now we've finished up the solar noon altitudes. Next to last here is the solar noon azimuth. We really wouldn't need this. I mean, I hope you can do it without even that number there. As I said before, the solar noon azimuth, meaning the direction you'd actually look to find the sun when it's at its highest point, is always going to be 180. Always. So those are across the board, 180, every single one. Last thing is the number of daylight hours. As long as I gave you one of these, you should figure out the rest. Now let's first of all go to the equinoxes. They're called equinoxes for a reason. Equal night, equal day. So you'll have 12 hours of daylight on both of the equinoxes. Done. Got those guys in there. And you'll notice from this equinox to this winter solstice, we've lost two hours. Well, whatever you lose from the winter, you must gain in the summer. So if you lose two hours in the winter, you must gain two hours for the summer. And bingo, there's the 14 hours that you would have for Houston. So there is the sun's path data for Houston, Texas, all generated by using those patterns and just a couple numbers filled into the actual um, data table. And I really could have done it with just three, well, just four pieces of data if we really wanted to, okay? So your assignment for today is to see if you know the patterns and to work on knowing those patterns. And I've got four data tables that you'll complete 
for four different American cities, four different United States cities. Um, you might have to refer back to this uh, to this PowerPoint and do so.